Welcome guys to my uh, second video tutorial, Creating Games in JavaFX. Uh, in this tutorial, we're going to be making this crazy highway game. And just show you a little bit about how the game works here. I can drive the car, I can shoot some of the other cars. If I shoot the orange ones, that's a good thing. But if I shoot anybody else or I run into a car, that is the end of the game. Now, this game may look a little more complex than the soccer keep ups game that we did originally because there's more going on on the screen but code wise i think what you're going to find out is that it's really not all that much more complex we have some sprites moving around on the screen we learned about sprites in the first tutorial and we have a game timer controlling things to make the animations we learned about that in the first tutorial and we have some keyboard input going on that we learned about in the first tutorial as well. Um, some of the new things that you're going to learn in this tutorial, we have three different kinds of enemy cars driving towards uh, the player. And we have the player and we have the bullets. We have three different kinds of sprite. They're all sprites, but each one of them behaves a little bit differently. And so I'm going to show you how to build on to the behavior of the sprite class to get these three new sprites. You also may have noticed that we have the animated background. Now, what do we do to create an animated background like that? Actually, not very much at all. It's just a sprite as well that's moving down the screen. And we're gonna get started with making that background right now. So on my screen right now, I've pulled up the starter code that I provided on the course website for the Crazy Highway game. And before I start building the animated background, I just want to walk you through a couple of things in here that are very much the same as the uh, Soccer Keep Ups game from the last tutorial. So just a couple of things that I want you to notice that are identical to how the Soccer Keep Ups work. Uh, first of all, I have a private hash set that I've called keyboard. And remember the hash set stores the key codes for the keys that are being pressed and released. Whenever a key is pressed down, we add the key code to the hash set. And ever when the key is released, we take the hash code out of the hash set. Um, so the keyboard is basically working exactly the same as it did in the soccer keep ups game. Now, the animation timer, I found a slightly better way to make the animation timer work. Slightly better in that what I've managed to do is take the code out of this uh, interface class and put the code into a class of its own. Now, I've provided you guys with the game timer class and the game tick uh, it's not actually a class, it's called an interface. And I'm just gonna show you really quickly what those two are. You won't need to make adjustments to these, but they, I wanna show you that it uses the exact same code from the soccer keep ups. I've just managed to put that code into a class of its own. So here's how that works. The game timer uh, class extends animation timer. That's the class that we use in the soccer keep ups. You might remember that in the game, um, in the animation timer class, sorry, we had to make a handle event in order to handle um, whenever the timer caused an event. Well, I still had to do that, and here it is right here. Right? For the game timer, I've figured out how to make it so that we can use a Lambda expression to say which method in our main program we want to be run whenever the handle event occurs. So this game timer class will receive the event and it will go ahead and do um, whatever method we tell it to do. And I'll just give you a real brief overview. I don't expect you to sort of recreate this, but a real brief overview of how that works is through this game tick interface. A game tick, or sorry, an interface in Java is kind of a description of what a class would have to have available in the class in order to say that it does this interface, that it implements this interface. So if I wanted to have a class 
implement the game tick interface, then somewhere within my class, I would have to include this method, public void game tick, and the code for what happens every time there's a game tick. Right? In my game timer, I can treat game tick as if it's a class and say that's going to be the handler for um, whenever the event occurs. And when the event occurs, I'll go to the handler and I'll ask it to run the game tick um, method. And the game tick method takes a double how much time has passed in seconds. So I figure out how much time has passed in seconds and I send that to the method that's going to handle that. My whatever the game tick method is in uh, the class that I'm using to do my main programming. However, I don't have a method called game tick. How am I using it here in the main in the main interface class? Well, I'm saying that for the game timer, the method I want you to call when game tick or when the event happens, right here I get to say what that name of the method is. Take your variable time, your double variable, and send it to the update game method, right, with time as the argument. So take the time in seconds, send it to the update game method, which takes elapsed time in seconds, and then I can update the game just like I did in the soccer keep ups. So the code for the animation timer has just been moved into the game timer class but all the code is actually identical. And I've added um, a method here for the game timer to see if the game timer itself is paused. And then we have a start and a stop method for the game timer. So we can just say our game timer start, our game timer stop. And then we can say game timer dot is paused in an if statement to see if the game is paused or not. It simplifies the code in our interface quite nicely by packaging all of that into a class of its own. Okay, if you're not fully understanding how the packaging into the class of its own worked, that's okay. Just know that basically I've used the same code and wrapped it in its own class that is now called game timer. And by making a game timer object, I get that animation timer in this program. Right, and I can start my timer, I can stop my timer, and I can check to see if my timer is paused or not. Okay, a couple other things to review just quickly. Um, the Crazy Highway game uses game states very similar to the way that the uh, Soccer Keep Ups game did. Right now I have a title screen state and a playing state. And this time, instead of having two separate group variables, one named title screen and one named game screen, I actually just made myself an array of game screens. Now, I put title screen as the integer zero so that the first element of this array will be my title screen. And I put playing as one so that the next element of the array would be my game screen. For my title screen, I'm including a title and a subtitle text. Again, uh, for the game screen, I'll be including elements in the game screen eventually as we build them. Right now, I just don't have anything to put in that group yet. But there's my two game screens. First one will be the title screen. Second one would be the playing screen. Uh, the reason that I've used an array this time, I want to have a few more screens. I want to add uh, like a game over screen. So I'll just add that as the next element of the array. And then as I'm working in the program, I can write nice things like uh, game screens, title screen, dot set visible is true, or game screens playing dot set visible is true. And it reads very nicely in the code to say, okay, th this screen is now appearing, this screen is now disappearing. Um, again, I'm just sort of setting up the look of my title screen with that stuff. And the only other methods that have anything filled in uh, to the method, I have my key pressed method for when a key is pressed on the keyboard. Uh, I have a couple of keys that I want to respond to immediately. So if the game state is playing the game and somebody presses the P key, that will pause the game. If the game state is title screen instead of playing, 
uh, and somebody presses the space bar, then that will start the game. Uh, no matter what state the game is in, so no if statement there, if somebody presses the escape key, that will quit the game and exit the program. And I'm not looking at any other uh, keys for immediate response to. So any other key on the keyboard that gets pressed, I will just add it to the keyboard hash set that that key has been pressed until the person releases that key and there's my key release method. Uh, when they release the key, I'll take it out of the keyboard hash set uh, so that we know that that key is no longer being held down. Uh, I have a quick little start game um, method that will make the title screen disappear and change the game state to playing and start the game timer. Uh, if anything else needs to happen, I'll add code to that later. And I have a game over method right now that just shuts the game timer off. And I also have a pause method that switches the game timer between started and stopped uh, when the player presses the P key. See how encapsulating the whole game timer has made this method look really very nice. I just have to say, if the game timer is paused, then start it. Otherwise, stop it uh, to switch between paused and unpaused. So if I run this program the way it is now, I get a very simple looking crazy highway, no background yet. Um, but I have my game state with the title screen and if I press the space bar, technically the game timer has started and it's running, but there's no sprites on the screen for anything to happen yet. So the first thing that I wanna do is add the animated background to this program. So let's get started with that now. Now remember I said the background is created by using a sprite. Actually, it's two sprites that work together and here's the idea of how it works. Remember, a sprite is just a picture that's moving around on the screen. So I just created a very large picture that's gonna move on the screen. Actually, two copies really of the same picture, uh, but they could be different ones, it's fine. And here's the idea, I have picture A and picture B that are sprites on in the program and as the game updates they slowly move down the screen right and i just make it look like a nice seamless spot between picture a and picture b now what's going to happen is as picture b reaches down below the edge of the screen i'm going to wait in the program for a sec or not wait but i'm going to take an extra step in the program just put it back up top and then I'm gonna keep the two of them moving the, down the screen. And when picture A gets below the bottom of the screen, before you can see the space for picture B, I'll move picture A back up top. And then just keep the two of them flowing down the screen again. And I just keep repeating that process forever. Right, so in the code, what does that look like? That looks like creating a couple of sprites. So a private sprite array. Now this sprite class that I'm using, I just copied it from my soccer keep ups game into here. Also provided you guys with the uh, base code on the website if you just want to download it, but it's exactly the same sprite class from the soccer keep ups. So I'm going to make myself a sprite array because I'm going to have two images and I'd like to keep them together. And I'm just going to call that array background. And it's going to be made up of, now you can create an array like this by putting a set of brace brackets and then saying the two things you want to be in the array. So first element of my array is a new sprite based on the image. And I just went and found a picture online of a highway that could make my image. You can see in my images folder there, I have background.png. So it's a new image uh, based on the file. images slash background.png. And that background is actually a little bit too big for this program. And so I'm gonna stretch it to fit the game width. So game width, uh, I'm not worrying about the height and I want it to be scaled nicely and um, look good when, when you do it. So that's a background A. 
And then background B, so I'm just going to go comma for the second one. Background B in my list is exactly the same sprite, just a second copy of it. Uh, now, I'm also going to sit and make myself a group to hold those two background pieces. So private group. Um, I can't call it background. I have to call it something else. So let's call it background display. So it's a new group. And what's in this new group? Well, um, background sprite zero is the first one, and background sprite one is the second piece of that group. And so I'm going there. Okay. And so that's the first thing that's going to be part of my like actual game scene. So I'm going to put the background into the game screen. And in the start method, I need to actually make my background kind of be positioned in the right place. Actually, I'm going to put that into my new game method so that every time the game starts, the background starts in the right place. All right, so new game method. First thing I'm going to do is uh, set the backgrounds up for the beginning of the game. Now, the first background, so let's call that one background zero. I want that, I want to set its position to, I remember I can set the position X, set the position Y, or set both of them. I want to set the Y position of this background. The X position will just be zero. It's the whole width of the window anyway, so that's perfect. I want to set the Y position of background zero to be equal to zero. I want it to start in the top left corner. And for background one, I want to set its Y position so that it's up above exactly one background length or one background height worth. So I'm going to go negative uh, background one dot height. So I'll move it so that it's uh, exactly, or get height, I guess, is the method I want, get height. So it's exactly above the background zero. And then I'll move those two down the screen at the same speed. So uh, background zero, I'm going to set its Y velocity, set velocity in the Y direction to 200. I found that to be a nice speed. And I'm going to set the velocity for background one in the Y direction to be 200 as well. Okay. Now, they're only going to move if the update game method tells them to move. So I'm going to ask first thing in the update uh, game method is be update the background. I don't have that method yet, so I'll have to write it. Public void update background. And I need to know how much time has passed. I'm going to call it time. I'm not going to call it elapsed time this time. Elapsed. I'm going to pass that information along to the method. Well, what should happen? I should have both of my background images or both of my background sprites move a tiny little bit. So I will ask them to update. Update based on the amount of time that went by. So background zero, please update. And background one, please update. Right? And then the other thing that I needed to do was check to see when background zero moves past the bottom of the game. So if background zero dot uh, get position y, if that position has gotten bigger than the game height, which I have a constant for, that's greater than the game height, then what should happen? I need to move it up above background number one. So it's going to be um, background zero, the one I'm moving, dot set position y. And where do I want to move it to? I'd like to move it to uh, above background number one. So background, now background number one might not have its upper left corner at zero any, at this point in time. So I'm just going to get 
uh, background number one's y position, get position y, and I'm going to subtract from that uh, background zero's height. So that moves exactly one background length above background number one. All right, that's what to do if background one went off screen and I need to do that again. I've got extra bracket there. I need to do that again, but checking to see if background two went off or background one went off the screen. Background one went off the screen, set its Y position above background zero by its height. Now, I know my background pictures are exactly the same, so I don't have to be so finicky here. But if my two pictures were actually different pictures, this would still work. Uh, why are you upset? Oh, I actually do have this method declared. There it is. Okay. So... Sorry about that. I will just put that in the method update background in the first place. Right, and now it's not time, it's elapsed time. All right, my bad. I run this. Now we're going to immediately see the background has been loaded. And if I press the space bar, my background becomes animated. Right, and now the game state is running, so if I press P, it pauses, no longer getting updates, no longer moving the picture, press P again, now I'm getting the updates, and it's not moving. I'm a bit concerned that my title screen did not appear above my game screen. I'll figure out the problem and let you guys know in the next video. Animated backgrounds set. Next thing we're going to do is work on getting the player's car onto that road. Okay, yeah, I found the problem. Uh, when I add the game screens to the uh, root node for displaying, I put the title screen first and then the playing screen. Uh, so that means the title screen is on the bottom and the playing screen is on the top. And the background is completely overwriting or being right on top of the title screen. Really, I need to put them in the order playing screen first and title screen second because the title screen just shows through down to the uh, game screen, the playing screen um, that has the road background on it. Okay, if I run that, and boom, now we have the tile screen where it belongs.